Hey everybody, Matt here coming at you again. Thank you for logging on and being a part of today's preaching and outreach video. We're talking about a brand new topic today, one that's been way too familiar in my life, and I believe it might help you. We go into the Word of God, and we're going to be looking in 2 Samuel and talking about what we can do to have victory in our life. Victory seems to be evasive. It, it seems to escape from the hands of so many who would love to have it. We want from God's Word victory raising our kids. We want to have victory in our marriages. Nobody gets married to be miserable. We want to have victory in our finance and get ahead in the world a little bit. We want to have the victory of peace of mind in a world of turmoil. How do we get victory when it seems to be running ahead and uncatchable by so many? We're going to look at 2 Samuel and tie it all together with a power-packed verse from Philippians chapter 1. Join me in today's word as we find the path to victory. Well, what kind of a week am I having? You know, I, I like the little phrase, I, I use the expression, live in victory today and victory. But what does reality look like more often than not when victory seems to slip out of our reach and, and fly away from us? We've begun the Atlantic Circle New Life Building Project. Oh my goodness, Woo! so much excitement, so much happening. Big, big time. Every day is another big, huge, wham, ginormous problem exploding on the scene. It's hard. It gets harder to live in victory when things aren't going right. Just being honest, on top of the first two weeks of our building project, I had to go to the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, three times. Yeah, that's enough, like, like a super shock vac, suck all the victory out of your life. Some of you, your spouse sucks all the victory out of your day. Other of you, your boss has a magical way of just pulling the victory out and making it disappear. Maybe you lose your victory and your peace on your way to work when you're just starting in the traffic and the grind and the pressure and it all builds. Maybe you have victory till you go open the mail and realize you're, you're in trouble. I don't know what comes in your life that attacks your victory, but let me tell you something. I believe that in the power of Christ, we can have the strength from some Bible secrets here to live in victory no matter what comes our way. I want you to join me in 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse number 8, where, where we see something. It begins by talking about mighty ones, mighty men. The Bible reads in 2 Samuel 23 and verse 8, These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tecmonite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, the same was Adino, the Ezite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. After him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahotite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defiled the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was heavy, and his hand clave to the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil 
And after him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Heretite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where it was a piece of ground full of lentils. And here he is defending this land full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines, but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. We started our reading with, these are the men whom David had. We ended with, the Lord wrought a great victory. Interesting. Men David had, God gave victory. Now, as we talk about this, we pull together around this power-packed verse from the book of Philippians, Philippians 1 and verse 27. Here the scripture reads, as the apostle is writing to the New Testament church, let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come to see you or else I be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Here he's saying, live in a way, let your conversation, let your lifestyle be in a way that becometh or helps along the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then step one for the strong person who's going to know victory in their life, he says, as I tell you to live in a way to advance the gospel like the mighty men David had, and the Lord reward, rewarded with a great victory, he says, stand fast. Stand fast. Stand fast means this, not easily moved. Not easily moved. In other words, in our spirit, when it says stand fast, we ought to decide, you know what? I'm in. I'm in. I am in. You know, we, we don't waffle all the time about what do I do, and we're always trying to decide. When we're always in the valley of decision, do I or don't I, will I or won't I, am I in, am I out, where am I going, what's my next choice, that's dangerous ground. The Bible says that a double-minded man, someone who can't lock in on their decision, is unstable in all their ways. In this past month, we saw a terrible tragedy in our nation, right in the great state of Florida, as an apartment building collapsed while it was fully occupied, and many, many, many lives were lost. But one section stood, and the other fell to ruins. Might I say this, everything about the section that stood spoke of stability, and everything about the section that collapsed and self-destructed speaks of indetermination, shifting ground. I believe that we need to move from dangerous ground to determined ground and decide that the decision is already made in our life. Then of course, as we look at this and we understand not easily move, a decision is made like I've already voted, my vote is cast, and I'm in for the things of God. Then of course we stand fast in what we believe. That's right, in a world trying to figure it out. Well, maybe there's aliens. Maybe Elvis and Marilyn are going to come back in a spaceship with John Lennon and work everything out. No, my friend, we know what we believe and we get what we believe from the living, breathing, eternal word of the living God. And we need to stand fast in what we believe. John chapter 6. Many 
many, many were departing and leaving from being with the Lord. They heard Jesus, they heard enough of Jesus, they still had problems in their life, and they said, you know what, we're all done now, we're going to look somewhere else. And Jesus turned and looked at Peter, and he said, are you taking off as well? And Peter said, where would I go? You alone are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let me tell you today, we're going nowhere else. We're not looking for anything else. The Bible warns us, if you see one doing signs and one doing wonders, don't go after them when they say, lo, here is Christ, or lo, there is Christ. No, my friend, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. What do we believe? We believe that God came down, that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. He who was born above the curse took of the curse upon himself, that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we through him might be made the righteousness of God. We believe that Jesus paid the penalty on the cross, that he tasted death, as the scripture declares, for every man and that He rose again, offering eternal life to all who believe on Him. Hey, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you believe the Bible truth that salvation is a free gift for all who will believe it? Oh, my friend, the more steadfast you are in Jesus Christ, listen to me right now. Don't miss what I'm about to say. Don't turn away. Don't turn it down. Don't close your eyes and shut your ears and ignore what I'm about to say. The more steadfast you are in Jesus Christ, the more contagious it becomes. You know, I, I, I look at it. And I realize that there's a lot of people who want their faith to stick to somebody else, and yet their own steadfastness in Christ is so weak that it's not very contagious. My friend, the more steadfast we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, the more appeal it has to every listener who comes across it. Now, I love a learned approach to sharing the gospel. There's nothing smarter that we could ever do than learn the blessed Romans road, walk people through the steps of truth, start in Romans 3 that there's none righteous, show them in Romans 3, 23 that all have sinned, show them from Romans 6 and 23 that the wages of sin is death, Show them that the good news is in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth the confession is made unto eternal salvation. Oh, how beautiful, as Romans 10, 13 declares, that whoever whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, how beautiful that is. But I love even more than a practiced and learned walk through the Romans road, a deep, passionate truth of I stand fast in what I believe. Like the woman at the well in the fourth chapter of John. She didn't have a good approach. She didn't have a lot of scripture. She ran to the people she knew and said, Come and see a man who told me all that ever I did is not this, the Christ of God. Oh, what a beautiful thing when we share the truth of God in a natural, contagious way for all he's done for us. Stand fast. This is one way to life, Jesus Christ. Stand fast in what we believe, our beautiful Savior, and we stand fast in the truth of Him, unwaving, unchanging forever. Then, of course, we stand fast not just in what we believe in our faith, but we stand fast in our practice 
what we are doing because of what we believe. So we stand fast in our service. We stand fast in service. That grand old word, faithfulness, especially at a time like this. Hey, national church attendance in the United States of America and in many, many nations is off. It's way down. You know, this is a time to settle it in your heart and life and be in for the church of God. I know it's summertime and everything is popping in the summertime. Come do this. Come do that. Come be a part here. Come be involved there. All the pulling is to move you out of church. Nothing is pulling you much into church. It's easy to get where you become instead of a three or four time attender to a one or two time to a zero to less, less, less. Hey, why don't you stand fast in your faithfulness knowing that God will bring victory because the faithful man is blessed in his deed. So especially at a time like this, when you get invited to something, say, I'll go to church and see you afterwards. Hey, when you've said this a thousand times, they'll get the message. They'll get it that you're not going to skip church for anything. Hey, we're having a big party. We want you to come over after church. I'll be happy to swing by. We're having a family reunion after church. I'll drive over there. Hey, come over to my house for a birthday party. We're, we're opening the pool. We're doing this. We're doing that. After church, you'll see me there. Get in the habit of saying that. And the light of that truth will drive into their hearts and they'll begin to understand that this Jesus that you believe in is worthy of your time and worthy of your attention to the point that he might just be contagious enough to be worthy of their attention. You know, too many times we're in the habit of missing. In baseball, they, they stand to bat and they get ready and they swing the bat and it's strike one, no hit, no score, nothing. Strike two, you're striking out. Strike three, you're totally out. You've missed the ball. You haven't made a hit. Let me tell you something. Just exactly like baseball, when you miss, you miss. And when you miss, you miss something that was loaded with opportunity. Something that was stacked, rich, full of truth that would help you, that would release victory to you, that would take you to another level, that would build depth underneath the roots of your life so you could spiritually grow deep into those roots and grow deep into that earth and get strong instead of missing out. Oh, my friend, when we miss, like a strikeout, we get nothing. Hey, it's about time that the people of God got more concerned about missing out on what God has for them at church than anything else. It's time for the people of God to look at it and say, you know, I'm all in in my service and in my faithfulness. I'm going to be a regular attender. I'm going to be a regular giver. I'm going to be a regular servant who's serving. And I'm going to accomplish things and get something done for the kingdom of God. Hey, we're investing to create spiritual fruit in our lives. And when we do that, we reap a great reward. You see, it's time for us as the people of God, the ones who want to be like the mighty men who David had, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Your life needs a great victory. Stand fast, not easily moved in what we believe. Stand fast in your service, your faithfulness, your actions in the house of God. But then stand fast in what you expect, your expectation. 
Faith is expecting something from God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because when we come to God, we've got to believe that God is and that He rewards those who come after Him. And so expectation is what are you counting on God to do next? What would you like to see God do in the next go-round? You see, eyes of faith see what's going to happen. The people who are giving right now to, to build the New Life Worship Center, they're not giving for walls and chairs and classrooms and air conditioners and zoning and permits and space and, and flooring and ceilings. They're not giving for those things they're giving with eyes of faith, looking down the road and seeing lives changed. Children coming to God, adults coming to God, addicts turning their back on their addiction, people being set free, a house of love where people are helped up around the Word of God. They're seeing something, so they're acting on it now. I believe when we raise our expectation and we count on God to do something, He always comes through. Those men who stood while the others fled, they didn't know that it would be written in 2 Samuel, the Lord wrought a great victory. They just knew that standing was the right thing to do. I believe you need to stand with some expectation that God will turn your children's hearts back to the things of the Lord. Some of you did a great job raising your kids. You loved them. You brought them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You had them in Sunday school. You had them in church. You had them in Bible study programs. And somehow, they're breaking your heart because they've turned away. Let me tell you something. Faith believes that God will draw them back in and their hearts will be tender to the things of the Lord once more. Raise your expectation with God. Raise your expectation about the victory God's going to bring in your own life. Well, I've battled this for so long. Hey, God is a deliverer who sets people free in a moment. You'll remember the Philistines got wiped out when one man stood. Maybe there are some things the enemy has claimed, and your stand will push the enemy back and reclaim it for you and the kingdom of God. Hey, the salvation that God wants to bring to your home, raise your level of expectation that God is going to save my house. Raise your level of expectation that God is going to do great things through your work and through your mind and carry you places you've never been before. Hey, the revolution is yours to have, my friend. Standing fast makes it happen. The mighty, the strong, they accomplish some things. David had these mighty ones. The Lord wrought a great victory. If God could just take us and we could stand fast, the great victory could open before us. Thanks for being a part of today's video. You know, as we begin this series on how the powerful live the realities of Philippians 1 and verse 27 and know that victory, real victory, does not have to be an elusive dream, doesn't have to be a gift for the super Christian. It can be something that's in our everyday life. We look at this and we understand more about it. My prayer is that we would all walk in the victory of God. One of the areas we walk in the victory of God is with our regular giving to God through His church. Now, as I take that giving envelope, and to some of you that's a real regular fixture, you see it all the time, you look at it, week in and week out and you're making offerings in in a vessel identical to that or one like it somewhere else we give and there's many reasons why we give some say well we give for three reasons or, or we give for this or that 
there's billions of reasons why we give the human souls that Christ died for. Yeah, we're, we're giving right now to complete a plan so that we can build a place where God's Word can be proclaimed and where classrooms can be opened and children and adults can be taught and learn and grow in the things of God. But that's not why we give. We give out of a heart to love our Lord and to help reach somebody else with the love of God. Would you go to newlifebegins.com forward slash give and make your generous offerings today. God bless you. Thanks for being one of our faithful and supportive friends.